Hello everyone. Uh, I just wanted to make a, a little video to show off something uh, which is kind of important to the history of something, but which I couldn't find a good video of on YouTube. And this is partly inspired by a recent video from LGR. Uh, those of you who watch LGR might know that he has a second channel called LGR Blurbs. Actually, I guess he has three channels. There's LGR Food, which is just him cooking and talking about food. Uh, but then he has another channel called LGR Blurbs for short videos, which are kind of unscripted and don't really fit into his main channel. And he recently, very recently did a video on that channel about the After Dark mouse pad. And he's a big fan of After Dark, as am I. But uh, when I was a kid, on my first PC, on my first Windows PC, I had, I actually had After Dark. I think I had, I had After Dark 2.0. But besides that, I had something called Fish. Now, Fish is very important to the history of After Dark and thereby screensavers in general because it was the direct inspiration for Aquatic Realm, which is one of the most well-known After Dark uh, screensaver modules. Uh, so let me go ahead and run Fish just so that you can see what uh, what uh, what it looks like. So I think I put in a folder Fish three and then just Fish.exe. Is that right? Yes. There we go. I am here, of course, in Windows 3.1, which is the only true version of Windows. It's, it's, it's the only real Windows. There is no Windows other than Windows 3.1, except maybe 3.11 for work groups. So, um, so what we have here is, uh, what you're seeing is, it's just called Fish. And it ran on the desktop because, you know, remember in Windows 3.x, you had Program Manager, which was like the main interface, and then underneath Program Manager, you just had the desktop. So this, this is the desktop. And I have way too many fish here because, um, well, I guess I could turn down the number of fish. So here in the right bottom right, you can see fish 3.0 S. I think S means shareware. And if you right click on the desktop, there you go, you get the fish menu. So you can say about, for example. Yeah, so this is uh, fish 3.0 from Ed Fries and uh, Tom Saxton of Tom and Ed's Bogus Software. Uh, yeah, so this unfortunately is the shareware version. When I was a kid, I had the full version. I don't know if I still have it. I might still have it lying around somewhere. But um, but yeah, this this was something I managed to find and download online, the freeware ver uh, or freeware not freeware but shareware version. Um, Twenty five bucks for a screensaver like this is a little steep in my opinion. But yeah, t Tom and Ed's Bogus Software in Bellevue, Washington, which is close to where Microsoft is. Um, I don't think that uh, that address is still current. This program is almost 30 years old at this point, so I'm not, I would not suggest sending 25 bucks there and hoping to get the registered version. Probably won't work. Let's see, we click on Fish Artists. You can actually see the um, artists who drew the various things here. Species. Okay, yeah, so species is basically just, yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean species in the scientific biological sense but just species in the sense of, the, of this program about bogus how many programs have an about bogus option hey tom and its bogus software founded in 1988 to comes a simple goal to put a fish on every desktop yeah well, when fish brings reference to the world of microsoft, win microsoft windows 3.0 as bogus enters the 90s we hope to give your users fish animation at your fingertips that's awesome we explained we're not out to build credibility we're out to build incredibility oh yeah i i like these i like the sound of these uh, of these folks and their uh and their philosophy let's see what do we have in contents boy we have a lot of uh, there's actually quite a bit in the contents here this is a pretty good help file remember when windows had proper help files like this this is pretty awesome so yeah so there's a fish editor uh which unfortunately well you'll see in a second fish motion preferences um, using the screensaver, screensaver dialog. I'm just going through all the help screens just so that anybody who wants to read them can pause the video and take a look at them. And then, well, there's a glossary, desktop, the area of your computer screen behind all your application windows. If you have an application maximized, then the desktop is hidden. Boy, this is really user-friendly. I like the way this help file is, is worded. It explains what double click is in case you, in case you don't know what double click is. That's pretty awesome. Let's see just what quickly means. Wow, this is this is super stuff, man. This is really like uh, this is really this is really uh, a level of user friendliness that you don't normally get in fish software. So yeah, so you can create fish, and they even give you some some fishy hints. Now let me ask you, ladies and gentlemen, when, when was the last time you saw a Windows help file that gave you some fishy hints? I think that alone deserves that alone probably deserves the twenty five bucks registration fee. Um, but yeah, so you've got some fishy hints there, and then, yeah, and this is how you edit fish. 
and yeah, then you can create a fish tank. Okay, I think that's enough of that. So let's go ahead and close that. Um, so yeah, so like I said, this was, as far as I know, the direct inspiration for the Aquatic Realm module in After Dark. I think it's even acknowledged as such. If you go into the, uh, if you look in the um, help or the uh, explanation or whatever for Aquatic Realm in After Dark, it actually says it's based on fish from Tom and Ed's bogus software. So this is really very important to the history of screensavers because Aquatic Realm is one of the most famous screensavers ever and this was its direct inspiration and it, yet I couldn't find a real proper video of this on YouTube. There are several mentions of it on the internet but not really like a video showing off what you can do with it. Oh, I like these bonsai trees. Look at this. I mean, you can obviously see it's not just fish. You have some some tea kettles or coffee cans or whatever. You have some bonsai trees going by. You have women driving super fast in their roadsters with the top down. Uh, you have Doctor Who's uh, telephone booth. It's bigger on the inside, I guess. Um, and what are these? Salt shakers or lunar landers? I have no idea what that is. That does not look like a fish, those those red things. And this this is obviously a, a, a flower of some kind. Maybe it's a sea anemone and, uh, anemone and that's why it's here. I don't know. But obviously, the, most of these things are indeed fish. So what you can do, uh, you can say edit fish. Um, unfortunately, in the shareware version, you can't save the fish. So that, that's a little bit of a bummer. But you can, uh, you can open up the fish and see all the different fish here. So this is uh, an al al alki angle. I don't know what alki angle is. Alki perk? Percolating something? It's, it's the percolator. I'll can be B B W. That does not look like a B like that does not look like a black and white fish. It's not a BW fish. Yeah, the bonsai tree that we saw. Okay, a bubble. The bubbles also count as fish. Chromies, the clown fish, pretty awesome. Copper fish. I don't know if that's a thing, but okay. Ed fish. Okay. Fairy fish. Wow, that's beautiful. That's colorful. Fireworks, yeah, because of course in every ocean you have fireworks underwater. That's a normal aquatic life form. The flame, flower, yeah, that, that's just a regular flower, I guess. Jimmy, I don't know who Jimmy is, but um, that's that's Jimmy. Koi fish, yeah, the Japanese koi fish. Lionfish, the, li okay, I don't think, I don't think that's a fish. I don't think that's something you would see underwater in, in an ocean anywhere, but okay. New fish, parrotfish, Porsche, okay, yeah, so Porsche C, I wonder what the C stands for, Carrera? There is a Porsche Carrera, but isn't a Porsche Carrera an SUV? I don't know. Or maybe it's something else. I don't know. Projectile. Okay, yeah, that is, I guess that is a projectile of some kind. Seahorse. Swool, 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 oh, swallowtail. Okay, there we go. I, I, don't, I don't think you have swallowtails. I don't think you have butterflies in the ocean. Tangfish, TARDIS. Yes, indeed, that is the TARDIS. Tiger be right back. So this is this is what happens when the tiger goes away from the keyboard. He says he'll be right back. And okay, that's it. But yeah, you you can open up any one of these and you can uh, I don't know, let's get the uh, let's get the parrotfish, why not? And yeah, you can edit so you can draw on it. You can you've got this grid here you can draw around and you can see how it'll look here. You've got each fish has two frames of animation, so you can draw on the two frames of animation. Um, and you can, uh, let's see, you can also, yeah, you can choose whether the fish is rare or not. So obviously rare fish will appear more rarely. They'll, you, you don't have like a rarity slider. You can't set a level of rarity. You can just set rare on or off. So now it's rare. Now it's not rare. Or you can disable the fish altogether. And motion, you can say it moves vertically, uh, you can say it moves horizontally or vertically like that or diagonally. Now, this is really a level of interactivity and configurability that you do not get with After Dark's Aquatic Realm. I think in Aquatic Realm, basically, you can define how many fish there are and that's it and maybe how fast they swim. I don't remember exactly what settings it has, but I remember you can set how many fish there are and then there were like one or two other options and that's it. But this, not only can you draw uh, up to two frames of animation for each fish, you can even set whether it's whether it's a rare fish or not. You can set how it moves. Does it move horizontally, vertically or diagonally? Does it move only left or right or up or down or, you know, or up or down diagonally? Um, I mean, it's, it's really awesome. Like this is definitely 
a level of configurability that goes way beyond what you get in aquatic realm. So that's, this is kind of, for those of you who are creative and like to draw things like this, this is definitely the highlight of the show. This was, when, when I was a kid, I actually drew many different designs for fish and put them on the, you know, in the fish tank. And then uh, my desktop showed a bunch of fish that, I've, that I had created along with the fish that came with the program. I didn't turn the other fish off, but my fish swam with the pre-configured fish. So yeah, so that's nice. So there's that and, um, Oh, it reloaded the fish, I guess. Uh, so we can make them go a little faster if we, let's see, if we go to the preferences, we can say, yeah, I set it to 99 because if you have not many fish, it goes quite fast if you don't, I mean, I guess you can just turn down the cycles in DOSBox. I mean, I'm running this in DOSBox. So if you have the cycles count set pretty high, then those fish will move pretty fast. Like, what does it look like if I have just, let's say, I don't know, five fish? It's still, eh, it's not super fast, but it's it's definitely, I would prefer my fish to be a little bit slower than that. So yeah, let's go ahead and go back to, whoops, I didn't want to edit fish. I wanted to, uh, oh, it reloads when you, uh, I didn't want to edit the fish. I wanted to just set the number of fish. So let's, uh, let's go back to, uh, let's try 30. Is 30 okay? And let's see, so we can say a black background. It doesn't seem to be working because, I, I say black background, but oh, that's probably when the screensaver activates. Okay, let's see. So if we go ahead and say 30 fish. How, yeah, that's all right. They're swimming a little speedily, but not too speedily, I guess. Yeah, that works. Okay, and what else do we have here? For screensaver, we have, yeah, so if you want to say sleep, remember how screensavers were like this? You could make the screensaver activate now by moving the mouse into a corner of the screen, or you could leave the mouse in the other corner, in a different corner of the screen to say never go into uh, screensaver mode. You can also password protect the screensaver. So let's see, what, what if I actually do this now, if I move the mouse to the lower right to sleep now, does it actually sleep now? Yes, it does. Oh, and it actually, I didn't even realize it does that. It, it actually has a, uh, Oh, it disappears when the fish uh, swim over it, but there was a registration notice there to register that. I'm a little bit bummed that I don't have the full version anymore because I had it when I was a kid. I must still have it on a disc somewhere, but I don't know where now. Um, but I mean, yeah, it was basically like this, except it didn't have the shareware registration notice on the screensaver, and you could actually save your edits to the fish. Hey, look, there goes a bubble. I think bubbles must be, oh, I was going to say, I think bubbles must be rare because I haven't seen many of them, but now I'm seeing two of them. So maybe they just didn't show up very well on the uh, on the gray background that we had before. But yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is a very nice and relaxing screensaver. Now you might, aesthetically, you might prefer After Dark's Aquatic Realm because it's a little bit less linear than this, first of all. So here you can see fish can move in one of three patterns. As you saw, they can move just horizontally, or they can move vertically, or they can move diagonally. In Aquatic Realm, their movement is a little more random. They don't just go from side to side. They can kind of, you know, come down and, and swim a little bit diagonally and then change directions and start swimming more horizontally and then kind of go vertical again. So, um, Aesthetically, that randomness of movement might be more pleasing. And of course, the appearance of the fish. I mean, I like the way the fish look in this, but the, the fish in After Dark's Aquatic Realm might be aesthetically more pleasing. That's just, you know, it's just a, a matter of taste, right? And also in Aquatic Realm, you'd have those plants on the bottom of the fish tank, which you don't have here. So, you know, there, there are features that Aquatic Realm had that uh, this doesn't have. And then, you know, uh, Aesthetically, visually, that's a subjective thing. Whether you prefer the look of this or you prefer the look of the other one, that's that's just a matter of taste. And thinking about it now, maybe the the appearance of the fish in Aquatic Realm is a little bit more pleasing for a screensaver. They're they're both in terms of how they look and in terms of their movement, in terms of their way of moving around the screen. Perhaps Aquatic Realm is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, and maybe that's why it won out in terms of marketing and why this program is so obscure today. But still, I consider this really a very important piece of history because, again, this is the direct inspiration for one of the most important and widely used and famous screensaver modules ever in all of history. So, so for that alone, I think this deserves some recognition. Um, and we can say switch to, oh yeah, this is just Windows Task Manager. Uh, and I guess that's it. We've seen everything already, haven't we? Yeah, we saw we saw the options. We, we saw that you can do with this. So, so I mean, that's it really. Like there's nothing really, um, let's say fish directory. Yeah, just 
and choose what what directory or folder now nowadays you'd call it a folder where you get the fish from but you just say exit and it turns off and you go back to the regular windows desktop so that was it that was fish and um, that's really all I had to say. I just wanted to show off what it looks like, what you can do with it, and why it's such an important piece of computing history. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope that this was interesting. I hope that you enjoyed. And uh, keep fishing. Keep enjoying your aquatic uh, desktop fish because it, they really are a work of art, aren't they? They really are something wonderful. They, they were something wonderful 30 years ago, and they still are wonderful today. So again, thanks for watching, folks. I hope that you're all doing well. Take care, and bye-bye for now.